Hello, uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, uh, still on uh, industrial electronics and one. Uh, now on the question paper, which was written in uh, February 2022, um, we are going to focus on person number one and see uh, actually what we're supposed to do in this question paper uh, for netted engineering. So we're not going to waste much time. We're going to quickly rush through the questions so that we can see how we're supposed to attempt these typical questions. We are given on 1.1. Uh, that uh, from this information, choose an item from column B. So your answers are supposed to be taken from column B. That's where our answers are taken from. Uh, that matches the description in column A. So your answer is supposed to match what is written in column A, right? Only the letter A to J next to the answer to the question number 1.11 to 1.15 in the answer book. All right, so that was the requirement. So 1.11 charges that flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of a cell. What are these charges which flow from the negative whenever we are referring to the negative that's we are dealing with electrons. Uh, if it was positive then we are dealing with protons. So in this case we are dealing with electrons and we have got electrons on D. So number 1.1 was supposed to be a D. All right. 1.12, the instrument used to measure a specific gravity. Uh, we know that when you're dealing with a gravity, that's a hygrometer, hydrometer. So there we are going to use a hydrometer, which is A. Okay, 1.13, the bond between adjacent atoms in a crystal lattice structure. That is the bond that is found. What type of bond is that? That's a covalent bond. As you can check the other answers there, they are actually... Uh, don't match with this one. So that one is a covalent bond, which is B. Unlike charges, what happens to unlike charges? All right, they do not attract. Uh, remember, uh, these are uh, unlike charges. Okay, the, these are unlike charges that we are referring to. So they do attract. Okay, uh, if they are like charges, like charges, they repel. So in this case, our answer was attract. Okay, unlike charges, they do attract each other. Okay, doping refers to the addition of impurities to these materials. To this material, okay, which material is it that uh, we can uh, actually offer, we can have uh, a doping. All right, so we have got uh, intrinsic silicon, yes, uh, extrinsic germanium, no. So our answer here is supposed to be intrinsic silicon, which is G. All right, so that was uh, this part on 1.1. Okay, 1.2, indicate whether the following statements are true or false by writing only the word for, or true or false next to the question numbers. Okay, primary cells can be recharged. Is it true that primary cells can be recharged? No, they won't. Uh, we can't do that. So this is false. Okay, this is actually false. Okay, that's a false. Just need something here. Okay, so this is actually false. One point two two. The crystal lattice structure of germanium is similar to that of silicon. Are they similar? Yeah, germanium and silicon. They've got the same. Oh, uh, they are similar to each other, and that's true. Okay. Uh, the voltage drop across the junction of a silicon diode is approximately. Uh, 0, 0,3. Okay, a silicon, silicon, that's no. Uh, silicon is approximately 0, 0,6 volts or 0, 0,7 volts. For 0, 0,3, this is supposed to be a germanium. So this is actually false, all right? Uh, 1.24, a voltmeter is always connected in series to a closed circuit. A voltmeter, this is actually false. Um, why uh, a voltmeter is connected in parallel, okay? Uh, and the one that you connect in series, that's an ammeter for measuring current, not a voltmeter. A voltmeter is connected in parallel. So sometimes they can even ask you to draw uh, a circuit diagram to represent how to connect a voltmeter. You draw it in, uh, in parallel, okay? Uh, so that is what we are supposed to, to, to have on this one. 
All right, so uh, let's check the 1.25. The magnetic lines of force move from the North Pole to the South Pole inside a magnet, inside a magnet. No, oh, no, 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 no. That's a force they won't be. Uh, it will be from one magnet to another, not inside that same magnet. No, that magnet will actually blow out. Uh, that's impossible. Okay, 1.3, state three factors that influence the capacitance of a capacitor. If we are given a capacitor, what are the factors uh, which influence the capacitance of that capacitor? That so for these factors, if you know the formula for capacitance, then it can be easier for you to uh, list down the factors because we know that the capacitance is given by uh, that's E or A over the distance. So we are talking about the type of the capacitor the, that you are having, the area and the distance between the, the, the dielectric. So let's just have it here. So we have got the area of the plates that is the cross-sectional area, and this cross-sectional area is measured in square meters. The dielectric constant, which is the dielectric material, that is the one that is given by in the type of the material that you are using. Uh, then the distance between the plates, that is that small letter D that we saw here, that is the one that you are working with, and it is measured in meters. So these are the factors. Uh, which you can take from the formula that you are given. So from that formula, we can actually have uh, these three uh, factors which influence the capacitance of a capacitor. So that's it. You can have three marks from there. Uh, let's check the other part of the question, uh, which is 1.4. So on 1.4, we were given uh, a capacitor. Uh, a circuit consists of three capacitors. All right, so I'm just going to change something here a little bit. Sorry for that, guys. I'm just going to change here. All right, so that's it. We are given that a circuit consists of three capacitors of one microfarad, two microfarad, and six microfarad, respectively. Calculate the following, the total capacitance of the circuit if the capacitors are connected in series. Okay, if these capacitors are connected in series. All right. We know that if we are dealing with capacitors in series, they act the same way as the resistors, which are in parallel. All right, so that is the concept. So which means for us to determine the total capacitance, we are going to use one over CT, which is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3 and so on. So take note, we are given the capacitance of the capacitors, which is one microfarad. So don't uh, for the meantime, just ignore the microfarad concept. Just use the numbers as they are. So we put one, two, and six. So that means here, one over CT, which is one over the total capacitance, is equal to one over one, the first one. The other one was two microfarads, and the other one was six microfarads. So that is what you're going to have. So one over the total capacitance is equal to, uh, from your calculator, you can actually uh, add these numbers together. That's uh, one over one, which is same as one. So one over one is just one, guys. Okay, plus one over two, uh, plus one over six. So you're going to have one over six in this manner, uh, which is five over three. So we are going to obtain five over three. Take note, this is one over CT. So for us to find CT, which is the total capacitance here, we just have to find the inverse of this number, which is you just have to divide by one. So by dividing by one both sides, that means we are going to obtain CT is equal to one divide by five over three, uh, that's three over five, or you can even use your calculator, one divide by the answer that you got, that's three over five, three over five, of which three over five as a decimal is same as 0 0.6. So this will give us 0 0.6 microfarads. We then use the units that we are being given before. Remember, we are given these units as microfarads. Your answer also is supposed to be in microfarads. Okay, on 1.42, the total capacitance of the circuit, if the capacitors are connected in parallel, okay, if the capacitors are connected in parallel, they act the same way as resistors which are connected in series. So that means you add the capacitors, the capacitance that you are given. So that's 1.42. We are going to add uh, the capacitances. So CT it will be equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. That means our CT, remember C1 was one microfarad, C2, two microfarad, C3 was six microfarad. So you just have to add, and this is going to give us nine microfarads, which is CT. 
All right, so that is the total capacitance for the circuit if they are connected in parallel. Uh, for 1.43, we are given that the charge across the parallel combination, if they applied, take note here, we are given the charge across the parallel combination, which is the one that we had here when they are connected in parallel. Remember, uh, we calculated the, the, the total or the total capacitance when they are in parallel. Now the question is asking to calculate the charge for that parallel combination. So what do we have? We have the total, so this is 1.43. We have the total capacitance when they are connected in uh, parallel. Okay, we have for the total uh, capacitance of nine microfarad, uh, which is the same as nine times 10 to the power of minus six per farad. We are given the voltage now of 20 volts. So the question is for us to calculate the charge, which is Q. How can we calculate charge from these two? Okay, we know that charge is equivalent to the capacitance times the voltage that is there. So that means the total charge is going to be the total capacitance times the total voltage which is the total capacitance of nine times 10 to the power of minus six times the total voltage of 20. So the rest is you and your calculator there. Uh, nine times 10 uh, to the power of minus six. Okay, so this is to the power of negative six. Whatever that we have, we multiply by 20, which is uh, 1,8 times 10 to the power of minus four. So we put 1,8 times 10 to the exponent of minus four coulombs. So remember that uh, charge is measured in coulombs. So you just write a C for the for the for that uh, coulombs part. So that's that was the total charge for for, for the for the given circuit. If they if they are connected in uh, in parallel, you are using the total capacitance for the parallel combination and also the total voltage that you are given. Uh, all right. Let's check 1.5. State three factors that influence the inductance of an inductor. If we are dealing with an inductor, what are the things that influence that inductance? All right, so we have our answers here uh, for the factors which influence uh, the inductance. That is the number of turns. So we are going to deal with the number of turns in the inductor, all right? The cross-sectional area of the core, uh, the permeability of the core material, and the length of the conductor, which is the wire that you are dealing with. So these are the four factors that we have. Uh, the question was as, actually asking us to determine any three. So which means here, you are going to just have any three from these ones that uh, affects the inductance of an inductor. Uh, I think, okay, that's what we had from this person. And uh, as you can see, guys, this is actually a total of 25 marks. Uh, from this question number one. And uh, it just needs you guys to revise as much questions as you can, work with your question papers, textbooks. Uh, it can actually help us guys as we are moving uh, from one stage to another. So that's it guys from Amazon African Motives, still on industrial electronics. Anyone till uh, we meet again.